Hi friends, in this session I am going to explain the proof of the theorem every rational function has a partial fraction expansion. So to prove this theorem we must know what is rational function and what is partial fraction expansion. So fraction function is a rational fraction where the numerator and denominator are polynomials having no common factor. That means numerator and denominator are having no common zeros. Next partial fraction expansion which is a process of expressing the rational function as a sum of a polynomial and one or more fractions with a simpler denominator. So to prove the theorem every rational function has a partial fraction expansion it is enough to prove every rational function can be written as sum of a polynomial and one or more rational fraction with a simpler denominator. Next going to the proof of the theorem. Let us assume r of z equal to p of z by q of z be a rational function where the numerator degree is n and the denominator degree is m. These are polynomials. Now assume that the numerator degree is greater than the denominator degree. That means n is greater than m. Then definitely r of infinity is equal to infinity. Therefore, infinity is a pole of r of z. Because pole means for what value of z, r of z is infinity, that values are called poles. So here, when you substitute z equal to infinity, r of z is infinity. Therefore, infinity is a pole. And is the order of this pole infinity is n minus m. For example, if you substitute r of z is equal to z q plus 2 z minus 3 divided by z plus 1, which is a rational function. See here the numerator degree is 3 and the denominator degree is 1. That is n equal to 3 and m equal to 1. That is n value is greater than m value. When you simplifying this, first in the numerator, the highest power degree of z is z cube. So take z cube by outside. And then remaining term is here. First 1, then plus. The second term is when you take z cube by outside, the second term reduced to 2 by z square. And the third term, minus 3, this reduced to minus 3 by z cube. And in the denominator, z power 1 is the highest degree term. Therefore, take z by outside. So here remaining term, first 1, then plus the second term, this 1 is reduced to 1 by z. And see here, the numerator and denominator, having 1 z is common, so cancel 1 z. So this equation is reduced to z square, the whole into 1 plus 2 by z square minus 3 by z cube, whole divided by 1 plus 1 by z. Now substitute z equal to infinity, we can find the value of r of infinity. When you substitute z equal to infinity, the right hand side becomes infinity power 2. Therefore, r of infinity is equal to infinity. Therefore, infinity is a pole of r of z. And the power of infinity is here 2. Therefore, the order of infinity is 2. Here in this example, n value is equal to 3, m value is equal to 1, and 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. That is, n minus m value is equal to 2. That is the order of the pole infinity. Now divide the numerator p of z by the denominator q of z until the degree of the remainder r1 of z is at most equal to that of the degree of the denominator q of z. Let us assume g of z be the quotient when p of z is divided by q of z. For example, suppose r of z is equal to z q plus 2 z square minus 3 z plus 1 divided by z plus 1. Now divide the numerator by denominator 
using polynomial division until the degree of the remainder is equal to the degree of the denominator. And here the degree of the numerator is 3, that is n equal to 3, and the denominator degree is 1, that is m equal to 1. And in this example, the remainder is minus 4 z plus 1, and the quotient is z square plus z. See here, the quotient is a polynomial without constant term, and the degree of the quotient is true, that is n minus m. So in general, we can say the quotient g of z is a polynomial, without constant term and the order of g of z is n minus m. Now by division algorithm we can write p of z is equal to q of z into g of z plus r1 of z. That is q of z is the denominator, g of z is the quotient and r1 of z is remainder. So we can write p of z is equal to the denominator into quotient plus remainder. For example, if you want to divide 9 by 2, the remainder is 1 and the quotient is 4. So we can write the numerator 9 is equal to the denominator into quotient plus remainder. In this manner, we can write this P of Z is equal to denominator into quotient plus remainder. Therefore, R of Z is equal to P of Z divided by Q of Z. Now substitute P of Z value in this numerator. We get G of Z plus R of Z divided by Q of Z. That is R of Z is equal to G of Z plus H of Z where H of Z is equal to R1 of Z by Q of Z and which is finite at Z equal to infinity because R1 of Z and Q of Z are having same degree. So when you substitute Z equal to infinity, definitely the right hand side becomes a constant term, not is infinity. We have already seen that the degree of the pole infinity is n minus m and also the degree of g of z that is the quotient degree is also n minus m. Therefore, this quotient and the poles are having same degrees. And this quotient g of z, this is called the singular part of r of z at infinite. If m is greater than n, then r of z is equal to h of z. That is when the numerator degree is less than the denominator degree, then there is no quotient term. So, R of Z is equal to only H of Z. We have already seen that R of Z has a pole at infinity. Similarly, R of Z has some finite pole also. Let us assume the finite poles are beta 1, beta 2, etc., beta q. Therefore, by equation number 1, we can write R of Z is equal to GJ of 1 by Z minus beta J plus HJ of 1 by Z minus beta J. Where GJ of 1 by Z minus beta J is a polynomial in 1 by Z minus beta J without constant term. And the function HJ of 1 by Z minus beta J is finite at Z equal to beta J. And this term GJ of 1 by Z minus beta J is called the singular part of R of Z at beta J. Now define a new function S of Z is equal to R of Z minus G of Z minus summation of G J of 1 by Z minus beta J, where J varies from 1 to Q. This is a rational function which cannot have other poles than beta 1, beta 2, etc., beta Q and infinity. That is the only poles for S of Z are beta 1, comma beta 2, etc., beta Q and infinity. At Z equal to infinitely, we have already seen that H of Z is finite. From equation number 1, 
we can write r of z minus g of z is equal to h of z and this h of z is finite when z equal to infinity but this h of z is equal to r of z minus g of z so when h of z is finite then this r of z minus g of z is also finite equation number 3 r of z minus g of z that is the difference of r of z and g of z this must be finite at z equal to infinity similarly the last term summation of g j of 1 by z minus beta j is also finite at z equal to infinity because this function is infinity only at a point z equal to beta j at all other point g j of 1 by z minus beta j is finite so totally the right hand side value is finite when z equal to infinity therefore s of z is finite at z equal to infinity similarly at z equal to beta j r of z and the corresponding g j of 1 by z minus beta j becomes infinity but their difference h j of 1 by z minus beta j is finite at z equal to beta j we have already seen that h j of 1 by z minus beta j is finite at z equal to beta j from equation number 2 we can write r of z minus g j of 1 by z minus beta j is equal to h j of 1 by z minus beta j so when z equal to beta j this function h j of 1 by z minus beta j is finite but from this equation this h j of 1 by z minus beta j is also equal to r of z minus g j of 1 by z minus beta j therefore this r of z minus g j of 1 by z minus beta j this also finite at z equal to beta j now equation number 3 becomes s of z is equal to r of z minus summation of g j of 1 by z minus beta j minus g of z so when z equal to beta j this difference r of z minus the summation value is finite similarly the last term g of z is also finite because g of z is a polynomial without denominator so when you substitute z equal to a finite value beta j this g of z must be a constant so totally the right hand side reduced to a constant thus s of z is constant at z equal to beta j also therefore s of z has neither any finite poles nor a pole at infinity because when you substitute z equal to beta j and z equal to infinity s of z is a constant term therefore s of z must be a constant a rational function without poles must reduce to a constant and if this constant is absorbed in g of z so by equation number 3 we can write r of z is equal to s of z plus g of z plus summation of g j of 1 by z minus beta j here s of z is constant so this is absorbed in g of z so this equation can be rewritten as r of z is equal to g of z plus summation of g j of 1 by z minus beta j thus r of z has been decomposed into partial fraction in the form r of z equal to g of z plus summation of g j of 1 by z minus beta j that is r of z is equal to sum of a polynomial and the sum of rational fraction with a simpler denominator therefore every rational function has a partial fraction expansion thank you